everyone, it's Emily, and today I'm going to talk about how to check on the quality of your clothes, and you don't have to be an expert to do it. We're going to cover fabrics, fibers, and sewing and stitching. So I want to compare examples from poor and good quality clothing so you can see both sides. So I'll be showing you bad examples from my own personal wardrobe, my own past fast fashion mistakes, and I will also be showing you some good examples from my own personal collection and how I try to emphasize good quality. And I'll also be taking you on a little trip to Beverly Hills, um, Rodeo Drive, to show you some more high quality examples. I also want you guys to keep in mind that fast fashion clothing is extremely low quality due to cheap materials and labor. They're made to fall apart quickly, so you'd actually go back and purchase more. And you'll see examples um, that I'm gonna show you and exactly what to look for when assessing is this something worth buying. Um, in general, fast fashion is made to be thrown away after a couple of wears. So let's get started. So let's talk about fabrics. A low quality fabric is pretty easy to spot when you can feel it. Um, it's usually transparent. Um, sometimes if it's a really thin fabric, like you can see from this shirt, and you can move the threads around sometimes. You can check in store if, if the, the weaving is really loose. Um, it may even pill after a few washes, so you can sort of see how the fibers are, are starting to pill. Most high quality fabrics should retain their shape after being stretched. This is called recovery. And it's really important if the garment is meant to be tight fitting or structured. So if you pull a piece of clothing between your hands and it looks different or saggy after you let it go, it will likely not fit the same way after a few washes or wash cycles. Another example of being able to tell if something is good quality or bad quality is in denim. You can tell if it's good if it actually feels stiff and uncomfortable at first. Though it will eventually break in and last a long time. So that is a little different from what I previously explained about recovery. Denim is different in that way. Another example of being able to assess quality is when you're looking at a print versus a jacquard. So what is a jacquard? Um, it's basically a woven fabric and the motif you see, I actually have this example, is woven into the fabric, so it's integrated. The yarns themselves are different colors. Um, so for prints, there's actually a layer of pigment that's printed on top of the fabric. So this would be an example of print, and it's a little cheaper. Um, and it's, very, it's much more easy to accomplish. So you can see on the other side, there's no, uh, there's no print. The next thing we'll discuss is fibers. So there are four natural fibers used most frequently, and they are cotton, linen, wool, and silk. There's also Modell, Viscose, and Tensile. They're of natural origin, but they're newer. Um, generally, natural fibers are lighter, more breathable, and more comfortable on the skin. We also have synthetic fibers, which are manufactured and chemically made. Um, acetate is like a plastic. Um, you also have polyester, rayon, acrylic, and spandex. They may not feel as nice on the skin. Um, they are chemically made, as I said, but they are more stable because they're chemically made. So they may not be the nicest on the skin, but they will tend to wrinkle less and they might pill more. Um, for example, acrylic is known to pill. And just because something is natural doesn't necessarily it mean that it's higher quality. A lot of manufacturers optimize their supply chain so that they're fast and they skip on quality. So you can tell when you wash a shirt and it shrinks to a really smaller size that um, it may not be a necessarily a good quality natural fiber. And another thing to watch out for is a fiber tag that's incorrect. Sometimes they'll say it's made of a natural fiber, but after a few washes and wears, you start to see pills that won't go away and the garment could have been blended with something else, like with a synthetic fiber. Um, in fashion school, you actually burn the fabric to see how it reacts, and that's how you determine the fiber content. Um, a lot of times you can be falsely misled with um, what the manufacturer says or what you're buying from the store. So sometimes a blend of natural and synthetic fibers is better. It can create a better feeling on the skin, but it's still 
more stable and easy to take care of. So now let's talk about sewing and stitching and construction. So one of the things you can look at is um, how big are the stitches if they're really loose and you can move them around like you can see in this little sweatshirt that the the stitches are so loose they're like coming off the fabric and you can almost move them around with your finger that's a sign of poor quality it means the machine wasn't necessarily set up right another way to tell if um, a garment is well constructed is to look at the lining so I'm going to show you a good example. Um, this is from my collection. So you can see that the pleats, there's pleats along the yoke on the outside. Um, this is the Colette top from my collection. But I also included pleats on the inside of the lining so that you can move more freely. So if, if um, a manufacturer is cheap or the designer or the brand is a little cheaper, you might notice that um, on the outside, you'll see pleats, but then they'll cut them. They won't include them on the inside. Another construction example, which also sort of relates to stitching, is um, how did they finish the inside of the garment? So you can see this is the inside of a pair of pants, um, and it's stitched with an overlock stitch, which is used in manufacturing. Um, but a more high-end method is to use French seams. So this is my, my Jacqueline pants. Um, but you can see on the inside, it's finished really nicely, all with French seams. So that means that instead of stitching on the outside with um, the manufacturing machine, I encased the seam so that it's clean finished. That's a more um, couture method. It's not done in manufacturing because it's a little slower and it, it takes longer, um, but it still works and it's still good quality and um, that's something you'll see in a smaller production. So that's just a few examples from my personal wardrobe. Um, we should take a look at other designers and what we can find on Rodeo Drive. That's another good example. So I hope you guys are getting a better idea of why things might be more expensive and what you're really getting for your money um, with a cheaper, like a fast fashion brand versus slow fashion, more higher end, smaller scale production. So let's go. So it looks like Bottega Veneta is open. So we can hop on in there and I'll show you guys some examples. in Bottega Veneta and their clothing is absolutely gorgeous. You can see all the different fabrics but it feels so nice and I even found an example of the French seam so you guys can see that. So I'm loving how they have this hand stitched closed. It's actually a men's blazer. You can even see hand stitching right here. So nice, amazing craftsmanship. So I'm outside the first Saatchi store, so I'm gonna pop in there and see if I can show you guys some more examples. Let's go. So this is a perfect example of the pigment on the fabric and you can see it's printed so it's not on the reverse side and the really beautiful embroidery on the shirt. So this is a perfect example of the lining allowing for movement. You can see that in the center back there's a pleat and you can actually sometimes take out those stitches and it lets you move more freely. Next stop is going to be Burberry. Um, they have so many good trench coats. I'm really excited to look at the linings and the stitching in them. Um, hopefully get some good, some good videos for you guys. So let's go. 
So this is a good example of the really clean inside. It's really nice to have the pant fully lined and you can see the pleats on the inside of the lining too, which allows for movement. Another great example of the French seam. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Um, please let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on high versus poor quality and if you have anything to add or I could make a new video if you have more questions about it. Don't forget to subscribe and share and thanks for watching. Have a great day.